Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth here. So uh, thanks for taking the time to join me on this video in regards to talking about kind of the spiritual sickness on the planet, but also how hopelessness leads to increasing your risk towards self-harm and or suicide. Um, anybody who has any sort of spiritual foundation or possibly a more religious foundation, or if you claim yourself to be Christian, you do know or can see things from a different angle or point of view through a spiritual lens that you understand that most of what's happening today on this planet all comes down to the roots of um, issues with the ego, but it's also a spiritual sickness because a lot of people don't have faith or have any sort of belief in a higher power. Now that we've entered a form of society that has higher amounts of atheists, um, it's really fascinating. It's like, why is that? We are entering a little bit more of a logical part of society with the increase of science and medical knowledge, as well as um, with technology. However, we do not tend to realize how much has been socially engineered and how many millennials have been socially engineered to think that nothing else exists. Um, atheism in general, which I'll talk about in a separate video, is quite a fascinating topic um, because they're on the other end of the spectrum as religious dogmatic people, which is very closed-minded. It's a very fixed opinion. It's, it's a person who is so absolute in their belief system that it can become kind of radical in nature. However, if you do start to think about the word hope, um, hope is, you know, the root basis of everything in faith some forms of religion, specifically Christianity, and probably other forms of spirituality as well. Having that ounce of hope is that belief that anything can happen. Um, now I don't want to just say anything is possible, but when you're really down in the dumps, you know that anything can happen and miracles can happen. Miracles come from having these great amounts of your life being tested and having hope that something better can come out of the situation. With everything that's happening today, it seems like we are becoming a little bit more hopeless. I can be included into that population because we are just seeing things drastically and radically change overnight and how the government is gaining more control of our life in America, which is something that we've never had. Um, and being in a country where we've, you know, preached freedom, to some degree we're more free than other parts of the world, but in reality we still have always been kind of a slave to the government. Um, with the increase, let's say, of atheism or just not having a belief, too much tapping into that logical, rational mind, you can see in this new millennium, in the last 21 years, how hopelessness has increased drastically because we are so connected to the earth plane in the material world. Look at 9-11. When people were hopeless standing in that building watching, about to watch a plane come into it, they jumped out of that window. They would rather die that way than maybe get burnt alive. Um, that's a little bit more of a radical example, but for ex the next one, uh, 2008, how many people increased, or excuse me, how many suicides increased in 2008 after the financial crisis? Living in Seattle and training tech people, I had a couple tech people tell me that they opened up their portfolio the next day and they lost six to $700,000. They said they immediately threw up. How many people when they've lost their house or everything, they've lost a job, suicide has increased, or people have retaliated from getting fired to a job and going up and blowing it up or whatever, all because they've lost hope. And why are they losing hope? Some of it is because we don't preach having hope anymore because we've lost and been disconnected as a society to any form of spirituality or religious connection. So there are drastic measures or consequences that can arise or happen when society becomes too individual or too disconnected from any form of faith. 
the Bible and Christianity is a faith-based religion. It is not a political and faith religion. It is just a faith-based religion. So everything always talks about having hope. And just some examples, say from a Christian point of view, is that Romans 8, 24, for in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? So that's pretty much just an explanation on how hope is never lost. How about having confidence in hope? Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance for what we do not see. Another example is that um, from the Bible that true hope actually can come from God with Romans 15, 13. May the hope, excuse me, may the God of hope fill you with all the joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, Romans 5, 5 kind of talks about how hope is a gift and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Um, and the last one is that this idea that hope endures with Proverbs 23, 18, there is surely a future of hope for you and your hope will not be cut off. So I do believe that when you've come to a point, a very, very low point, when you have absolutely no hope at all in your life, in your faith, hope in a God, hope in your community, hope in your government. I do believe that violence, but specifically self-harm and suicide can drastically increase. If you go to Google and you type in hopelessness leads to suicide, the first page of Google is nothing but academic journals and research studies talking about how suicide and hopelessness are pretty much one and the same, or when somebody is hopeless to the point of having no point of belief in anything turning around in their life, it leads to suicide. In 2012, I had three family members commit suicide within a year. Um, two of them I did not really know, one I knew, and then there was a fourth person, which was my pretty much closest childhood friend's father, committed suicide. So every single story, like my cousin, he was a distant cousin that I never met. He was 15 years old. Um, his girlfriend broke up with her, him. They're in high school. They're like sophomores in high school and he killed himself because of a breakup. My uncle killed himself due to the fact that he was holding on to all these other things and just kind of didn't have any hope in life because he was a little bit quirky. He was a very, he was an Aries. He was a very intelligent man into physics, but kind of liked some of the oddball stuff. Maybe it's a little socially awkward. And all of his rejection in life and trying to make friends at the gym and all of these things, he could never, he could never get the ball rolling and with all of that rejection just led him to have absolutely no hope in life anymore that he just wanted to kick the bucket and he chose to do so so this is a very serious thing it's not only not having and, and for somebody like my uncle um he understood me sometimes i feel like more than my other family members because he and i were very different but the thing is, he also had a history of uh, like drug use and drug addiction, or I should say pharmaceutical addiction. And so it's like, you know, when you really start to see these things, however, he did believe in God. So, you know, it's like all of this stuff gets messed up to where when you realize that hopelessness is linked to a dark force, it's all satanic in general. It's all demonic. Dark, demonic energies want you to be anxious. It wants you to be depressed. It wants you to feel nothing is there because it's the force of destruction. God is the energy of creation. He wants you to create. He wants you to be in a life of joy and happiness and hope. And the devil and the satanic, luciferian, demonic, bullshit energy is the one that wants to destroy. And what's happening right now on this plane of living in an individual society is that we are destroying ourselves. 
We've been destroying ourselves for a long period of time between pharmaceuticals and fast food, but we're talking about the destruction of the mind and the destruction of the spirit. And when the spirit has no hope, it's going to want to kick the bucket. So if you look at the first page of Google, type in hopelessness leads to suicide and just start perusing around how serious of a friggin' issue this is. The first link, jneuro.com, hopelessness leading to self-harm and suicide. The second link from the nih.gov, hopelessness is a predictor of attempted suicide among first, hold on my computer, oh, among first admission patients with psychosis, a 10-year cohort study. The third link from nih.gov again, the role of demoralization and hopelessness in suicide risk. Um, the fourth link, research has overestimated the role of hopelessness in suicidal, oh, sorry, I had to click on this because it's not showing the whole thing. This is, my computer is so slow. Um, research has overestimated role of hopelessness in suicidal ideation. Fifth link, hopelessness in suicidal behavior from the JAMA network, which I think has some journal of academic medical association. Suicide.org, hopelessness, a dangerous suicide warning sign. So I don't need to go on about this, but it, it's not just, you know, random opinion blogs that are popping up on the first page of Google. These are actual research studies or organizations that work with this that tell you how big of a problem this is. It's a huge problem. And if you are listening to this video because you are hopeless or whatever, you have to understand that there is something better out there for you. In terms of the collective of what's happening right now, it's so easy to lose your faith in anything. I don't know what the answer is going to be about the future and a lot of other people don't know. However, I do know that parasites rule the world. They've ruled Big Pharma and Monsanto, everything that's been trying to poison us and destruct us from within. And it's going to continue to increase the people of being sick. And look at people who are doing legal legalized euthanasia. euthanasia. I mean, okay, if you're 98 years old and in pain, you know, whatever. But there are some people that are so sick from cancer or whatever, they're not that old and they want to legally euthanize themselves because they want to be out of pain. They want to be at peace and they have no hope in healing. They have no hope in something getting better for themselves. A lot of this disease manifestation, besides it being actual self-induced through not taking care of yourself because of fast food, pharmaceuticals, drug use, whatever, a lot of this is such trauma-based living that is manifesting a lot of disease and sickness. I've talked about this in other videos about alternative cancer research is showing that it's not a disease, but it is a dis-ease of the person. So they try to look at like what happened at the time of your diagnosis, like what was going on in your life. And generally there's always some sort of trigger point or big catalyst event that just erupts people's lives and, and they get sick from it. So my, I don't want this video to be too long, but I just want to like kind of hit the nail in the head here that between everything that's happening on a collective level and your individual life, especially because the government is now meddling into people's lives, that it's increasing hopelessness. You cannot lose hope. If the NWO happens, I don't know what my best advice would be for that, but I know that every evil thing that has ever run this planet has been given its amount of time to run and rule, but eventually it ends. It always ends. It's like every stupid Marvel movie that's ever been made shows that maybe darkness gains a little bit of speed and light and it gets some power, but eventually it always crumbles. It always does. The Nazi era ended. <clears throat> the Roman empire ended. The Romans were, was, that was the biggest empire that ever lived on the planet. I sure hope to God this whole NWO bullshit, like Klaus Schwab thing doesn't come about. I really don't want it. We cannot lose hope and we cannot lose our hope to succumb to either that fear or to stop resisting against that, resisting against our natural born freedom that we're meant to have and that we have had, especially in America. 
So don't lose hope, but just know that the spiritual sickness of what's happening, because so many people do not have a spiritual outlook or a spiritual base or a religious foundation, it's caused from a society that is just promoting to not have any sort of faith. I will say one thing from a friend from Germany, her parents were children during World War II and you know they see how World War II three is coming about because it's happening the exact same way as it did in Germany back in the 30s. Um, they, you know, they did mention that it is a, a society can become, become very dangerous without some form of religious foundation. Now, the other side of that argument is, well, some, you know, religious extremists have really detrimented society, but this is a whole other topic of conversation, especially if you're talking about the Catholic Church that does not come from the light of God, that comes from the other destructive energy that is dark in nature. But you can see how some things that are happening on a destructive level, specifically the individual and wanting retaliation or whatever for, you know, getting fired from that job and going and blowing up a school or blowing up your FedEx or whatever. This is a deep rooted sickness that is happening. And so you cannot lose hope. You cannot lose faith. Anything that you're experiencing at this time that's difficult, it will be over with at some point. Every hardship has an end point. Thank you for listening. If you have any comments on this, please share them. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Um, if you are at risk at being suicidal, there are a lot of different networks out there for you. I can post those links down below, but just know that you have to have faith in yourself and your support system. Listen to those support systems because those are the people that are here to care for you. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.